This is Dr. Sevier Rao, and we're talking about peripheral nerve stimulation. Peripheral nerve stimulation is a new FDA-approved modality to treat chronic pain that is not responded to medications, injections, physical therapy, and even surgery. Or if you're not a found to be a surgical candidate, then stimulation may be another option. It's great to treat chronic shoulder pain, chronic groin pain, or chronic knee pain. The idea behind peripheral nerve stimulation is we're able to identify the specific nerve or nerves that are causing this ongoing nerve pain. So sharp, stabbing, burning, throbbing type of pain can respond to peripheral nerve stimulation. The first part of this is identifying the body part or the nerve that's causing the problem. In the shoulder, we can target the suprascapular or axillary nerve. In the groin area, we can target the ilioinguinal nerve. And in the knees, we can target the genicular nerve. Once we target these nerves, we can do an anesthetic block by anesthetizing that nerve under x-ray or ultrasound guidance to see how much relief you get. If you get good relief, then it's safe to say that that's where the pain is coming from. The next step is to do a trial or a test drive to see if this peripheral nerve stimulation can actually give you the type of relief you're looking for. We want 50% or better pain relief. The trial itself is just conducted through a needle, no incisions, no sutures. We access uh, the area through a needle. We thread the electrode, which has electrical contacts on it, through the needle and take the needle out and we secure the electrode to the skin. We leave that in place for about three to five days to see if this is gonna give you 50% or better relief. We're looking for improvement in pain as well as functionality. At the end of that trial period, you come back into the office, we take the tape off, we slide the wire or wires out, and we see how much better you feel. If that gave you 50% better relief and in functionality as well as pain, then we can move forward with the permanent implantation. Now, those of you who are familiar with spinal cord stimulators or even pacemakers may be familiar with this concept. It usually requires some type of battery or generator to be hooked up to electrodes or wires. In this scenario, the peripheral nerve stimulator that we're using is about this big as far as how big the receiver is. And that's what gets implanted underneath the skin close to where the wire and the electrode get implanted to stimulate the specific nerves we're talking about. That's a 20 to 30 minute outpatient surgery and has been uh, working extremely well for many patients. If you're interested, come in and give us a call. Come in and talk to us about peripheral nerve stimulation. Okay, for our first question, we have, is this procedure good for elderly people? So this patient, uh, this procedure can definitely benefit elderly, uh, especially for those people who are not candidates for surgery. So if the surgeon says, yes, you have a bad shoulder or a bad knee, um, even a bad hip or lower back, and uh, the risks of undergoing uh, general anesthesia, and the potential complications that come with uh, post-operative or after surgery recovery outweigh the benefits, then that this is definitely an option for those patients who may not be able to have surgery to fix something. Uh, we may be able to help you with this procedure to help block the pain. All right, and next question is, is this procedure good for back pain? The, um, the procedure, for the most part, we're looking at for patients who have shoulder, um, groin, or hip, and knee pain that has not responded to surgery or not surgical candidates. That being said, there are specific patients who may benefit from this for lower back pain, uh, patients who've had back surgery but are not candidates for a spinal cord stimulator, um, patients who have back pain but have not responded to other types of procedures, there is a nerve called the clunial nerve in the lower back that is around the pelvis area that we can stimulate. And we have had good success with patients who have not responded to other types of treatment. So uh, yes, this is a potential option for people with back pain uh, that haven't responded to other uh, types of treatments. Okay, um, and a similar question 
uh, can this nerve stimulation be applied to treat cervical pain? Right now, we're not using it for cervical spine pain. It could be considered for occipital neuralgia or, or pain in the back of the head uh, that can give headaches, but it's not indicated for cervical spine uh, issues. Okay, and um, another question along this same line, um, and I believe I believe the question is, how does this differ, differ from stimulation of nerves in the lower back? I guess that would be for the spinal cord stimulation. Yeah, so the spinal cord stimulator is uh, a different type of procedure that's placing the same, a similar type of electrode uh, into the epidural space, and that's targeting the spinal cord itself, which can give relief to uh, the cervical spine and arms, the lower back and legs. This is different because it doesn't have to go into the spine. It, it goes around the peripheral nerve, which is an, a, an outside nerve that uh, supplies the shoulder, the groin, and the knee, and doesn't actually have to go into the joint itself. So I would consider this a less invasive, uh, a definitely less invasive option uh, for conditions that have not responded to injections, physical therapy, and even surgery of the joints. Um, so this is a little bit different indication altogether. Okay, and uh, next question is, how long does the permanent implant last for pain relief? The permanent implant has been shown to be effective uh, up to five years at this point with um, potential need for changing the generator. Uh, the nice thing about the technology is that uh, there are different ways for the, the generator to work, uh, and we have the ability to have these... Um, the generated cell to last for quite a quite a long time. Okay, and next question is, how is this similar or different to the TENS? So the TENS unit is, is a external muscle stimulator and it stimulates the muscles and, and theoretically is meant to block the pain or and loosen muscles. This is very different because this is actually stimulating the nerve that sends the pain signals back to the brain. And block, by blocking this, you're really going after one of the underlying sources or causes of pain as opposed to a symptom of it. Okay, and is this device stable for very active people? Yes, it can be stable for active people. It just depends on how um, and where we implant the, the, the generator, the battery. Um, but we have patients who are very active who are still able to maintain their activity levels with this device in place. Okay. Do previous back surgeries change the relief of this implant? Um, not necessarily. Uh, what we would do is do a trial first to see if the specific benefits from this technology can be helpful to you specifically. And the trial itself only takes maybe less than 10 minutes to do. So it's a it's a pretty quick and very safe procedure uh, to see if the device itself will give you the relief you need. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna get these names wrong, uh, but can this be used for occipital and trigeminal neurology? It can be used for occipital neuralgia. Um, that is placing these wires at the base of the skull for patients who have back of the head pain and or headaches. Trigeminal neuralgia is something that we have not used it for uh, yet. Uh, it is, I think, a little bit more uh, sensitive of an area, and I'm not sure if it's gonna give us the relief that we're hoping for. Okay, next question is, I have uh, degenerative disc disease, will this help? If you have degenerative disc disease of the lower back and epidural steroid injections, radiofrequency ablation, and some of the other more advanced procedures that have come to market recently are not helping, then this is a potential option to help manage pain in that lower lower back area, uh, targeting the cluneal nerve. And um, we can do a, a, an injection around those nerves to see how much relief you get. If you get good relief, then we can consider a 
peripheral nerve stimulator trial to see if that can give you longer lasting benefit. And if the trial works, then we can move forward with the implant. Okay, last two questions. Uh, first one is, has this procedure ever been used for migraine headaches? It has, has not been used for migraine headaches. Uh, the closest we've used it is for occipital neuralgia, which may cause or lead to migraines, but it is not currently a treatment for migraine headaches. Okay, we did get a, an additional question here. Uh, is this an option for chronic sciatica or another word, uh, Schmorl's nodes? Uh, so for chronic sciatica, this is not a very good option because uh, it won't target the sciatic nerves that go down the leg. Uh, the spinal cord stimulator may be a better option for that. Uh, for pain from Schmorl's nodes, uh, depending on where the pain is located, this may be an option. Okay, this is the last question I have. Since this treats shoulder pain, would it also help radial nerve pain that radiates down the arm? And would it have any impact on radial nerve uh, palsy? It won't help palsy. Uh, palsy is going to be weakness. It's not going to give you strength back, but it could potentially help uh, radial neuralgia or uh, radial nerve irritation and inflammation if we place the um, the the electrode right around the radial nerve itself. Okay, that's the last question we have so far. Are there any more questions? All right, we have two more questions here. Is this procedure covered by Medicare and or insurance carriers? Yes, it is covered through Medicare and insurance carriers. And another question here, Schmorl's nodes at T5 and S1 location, is this an option? The S1, uh, yes, it is an option for both of those areas. Uh, we would have to target the specific nerve roots that we're looking at, but it could potentially help. Okay, looks like that's the last question we have. Uh, everyone will be receiving a follow-up email from us with uh, with the webinar, and you um, uh, feel free to respond with any uh, additional questions uh, once you receive that email. Great. Um, thank you for your attention, and have a great day.